During the years of Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao's dominating runs, there have been very few boxers who have reached the same level of coverage, analysis and hype as they do. However, as both men approached their twilight years and retired, it was Saul Canelo Alvarez to take the reins and become the new face of boxing. Canelo's boxing style is one of the best and most exciting to watch in the sport today. But for me, it is his evolution as a fighter and the tricks and the change of style that have made him so captivating to watch over the years. In today's Boxing Style Breakdown, I'm going to analyse his evolution as a fighter, as an aggressive counterpuncher, before developing into a top grade pressure fighter. A lot of the techniques and analysis you may have seen before, but this video's analysis and aim is to give you an overview of Canelo's complete boxing style. So on that note, let's get right into it. But first up, let's take a real quick look at his background. So Canelo Alvarez is originally from the outskirts of Guadalajara. He started boxing at 13 years old when he watched his brother's professional debut. Not only that, six of his other brothers were also professional boxers, no doubt encouraging him to follow in their paths. It was here in a local gym he would be spotted by Chepo Reynoso, who saw his talent right from the beginning. Saulo Alvarez would prove his talent by winning the Junior Mexican National Boxing Championship in 2015 and then finishing with an amateur record of 44 for 2 and 12 knockouts. Alvarez would then turn professional at 15. Shortly after winning this championship, the team of Chepo and Eddie Reynoso were unable to find suitable junior opponents for him and it was here would be the star of the legend of Canelo Alvarez as he would go on to knock out men who were in their 30s when he was just a teenager. Since starting his pro career, he quickly went on to become the youngest light middleweight champion of all time in 2011. And from here, it's really been non-stop for Canelo, as he's amassed victories over many world champions and pound for pound greats in his career, including 16 world champions to date. While he's also picked up these world title belts in four weight divisions, from 154 to 175 pounds, beating some all-time greats including Shane Mosley, Miguel Cotto, Sergei Kovalev and his biggest rival today, Gennady Golovkin. His only official defeats have come at the hands of Floyd Mayweather and Bevel, but despite all this, he's still considered a pound for pound great and one of the most exciting and best to watch in this era of boxing. And this is something he's definitely backed up in more recent years, having become the undisputed super middleweight champion in 2021. But now let's look at the style that got him here. What is Canelo's boxing style? It's important to go back to the beginning when Canelo was first coming up in the ranks before his world title run. The Mexican had a mixed style where he primarily looked to counter punch or use smart combination punching to create openings for the head and body shots. It wasn't your traditional Mexican boxing style and that is what I believe made Canelo stand out so much in my opinion. I would probably label him as an aggressive counterpuncher during his younger days. There is also probably a sense of Canelo finding himself in the ring, especially as a prospect and a contender coming up trying to prove a point and get knockouts to give himself opportunities. Sometimes he would be the aggressor applying pressure but sometimes you'd see him lie in the ropes or look to use defense with waist and head movement before countering. However, in more recent years, his style has without a doubt evolved and developed to create a more calculating pressure on his opponent, especially ever since his second fight against Golovkin. Since that fight, Canelo has moved up in weight and is not the tallest in the divisions he fights in currently, standing only at 5 foot 8. Many fighters would consider this a disadvantage and a reason not to move up, but Canelo has used this flaw as an advantage. The Mexican now mainly lures his opponent in with his high guard defense before quickly using head or waist movement to dodge shots and counterpunch, or even his use of feints. 
But the main aim of Canelo nowadays is to get you on the ropes so he can unleash his creative combinations to hurt or take you out and is now a much more typical Mexican style of fighting. It will be interesting to see if he will change this once again as he gets older and has to adapt to bigger and younger opponents eventually. His style is though something he has perfected and evolved over many years of hard work in the gym. But there are many tricks and techniques and methods you can learn from his boxing style that I believe you can take into your own. An offense first style. I recently read over again Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do. In fact, it's a book I go back to often when I create analysis breakdowns. Translated as The Way of the Intercepting Fist, which was Lee's combat philosophy and system that believes the best defense is a strong offense. While reading this again, I couldn't help but apply many of Bruce Lee's ideas to the way Canelo has approached fights from the very beginning of his career to where he is currently. Now if you've been following me for a while, you will know I've quoted and used Lee's philosophies in other videos, but I can't help but apply these ideas to Canelo's style and approach. To summarise Bruce Lee's principle and theory behind Jeet Kune Do, the premise is you must be able to adapt to any scenario thrown at you while being able to react accordingly. It teaches you to know when to attack or go on the back foot. While it's about being effective with your energy and movements so you're not limiting yourself. This analysis is obviously about Canelo and I will use some of Lee's ideas in this to help you better understand why Canelo uses specific techniques and methods while I'll also explain why he's evolved his style over time. Direct attacks using the jab. Now let's start off with the most important punch in boxing. As a younger fighter, I feel this was a punch Canelo would use often. Another aspect to consider was Alvarez was fighting from 147 to 160 pounds during his younger years. At this point in his career, he was able to employ and land this punch much more often and effectively due to the size of his opponents. Canelo would use powerful single direct attacks with the jab to help push back opponents, or he would simply use it to occupy and manipulate the guard so you could start off his beautiful combination punches or create openings, thus helping him land those crisp shots. However, opponents have stepped up in quality and in height compared to him now. The Mexican has had to be more creative with his jab to create new opportunities. One way is by using a high guard defense. He does this by leaning forward with his upper body so he can conceal his jab and keep opponents unsure of what his intentions are. The other way he lands on competitors is by using feints and lowering his lead hand. There's a great clip of him demonstrating this technique to Ryan Garcia in the gym. This is something Canelo uses often against bigger men and more often than not catches them off guard as he snaps back their head. Another great technique is using the jab not necessarily with the intention to land but just to help push back or to set up his right hand. A brilliant example of Canelo setting up this punch was against Kirkland where he threw to the body of Kirkland to try drop his guard before immediately going up top with his right, knocking him out in devastating fashion. Attacking with creative combinations. The Mexican is also renowned for his highly effective creative combination punching, which can be breathtaking to watch as a boxing fan. Combination punches are used to break down and find gaps in an opponent's defense, especially when they are in a stationary position or a tighter guard. Punches also need to flow in a natural sequence with each other in a way for your body to maneuver effectively while also minimizing and exposing yourself to punches. Just like I said about Bruce Lee's philosophy, it's about being effective with your energy and movements. And Canelo, in my opinion, is one of the very best combination punchers. A combination Alvarez has loved to throw from his younger years to this day is by doubling up and tripling with his lead hand, such as hooking to the head, then immediately hooking to the body or the liver shot. He also likes to intelligently interchange his shots with different power to gain influence over his opponent's guard to create openings. 
Sometimes he will make a slight pause with the combination to see how his competitors will react before changing the trajectory of his punch due to the opening he sees in front of him. It's no wonder we call it the sweet science when you watch someone like Canelo throw these combinations. As he's not just throwing them aimlessly, he's thinking with each shot. The other brilliant bit I love about his combinations is his change of entry. You will very rarely see him throw the same combination again and again after each other. He is always looking for ways to confuse or make his opponent hesitant, leaving them with only two options, get out of the way or shell up. However, better opponents have known not to stand and trade with Canelo in most cases and will look to move and counter him, which obviously the likes of Floyd Mayweather or Bevel evidently showed us when he lost. However, the Mexican has developed his game over time so he can develop his offense in other ways. Feints for setups. Now ever since the second fight in 2018 versus Golovkin, Canelo has evolved into using kind of more one punch tactics in some fights. The way Canelo has much success is through the art of feinting. Bruce Lee coined this type of attack as a progressive indirect attack which in boxing could be considered throwing a feint or an uncommitted punch to create an opening. Canelo uses feints mainly for setups, as it's a great way of measuring out your competitor's reactions so you can strike them more cleanly. Using feints can be very useful against someone with a good defense. If you're struggling to get your punches through, feints can manipulate and cause uncertainty when a punch is thrown at the opposition. In terms of Canelo using these feints, he'll change the level of his lead hand while using upper body and waist movement while also adding in foot feints occasionally. This is all with the aim to give different looks and cause that uncertainty as I just mentioned. Many times this can look like he's going to throw a left hook to deliver, but Saul will use these feints to see how they will react before actually throwing or setting up this punch. Another feint trick Alvarez uses is his famous elaborate right hand feint to set up a powerful left hook or uppercut. This move definitely causes hesitation in his opponent as the right hand feint creates a pause in the opponent to anticipate the punch, thus giving Canelo enough time to land the punch with his left hand. It is a move he's used throughout most of his career to create an opening for this punch. Counter punching. Now a quote I've used many times on this channel is of Bruce Lee's. The counter attack is an advanced phase of offense. It is the greatest art of fighting, the art of a champion. In Canelo's more younger years, I felt he was one of the very best counter punchers out there at one point. Watching him come through the ranks, his counterpunching skill set is definitely one of my favourite parts about what I love about Canelo Alvarez, particularly because he's so devastating at it. One of the best punches he uses is a very basic boxing technique that you will learn at any boxing gym you walk into, slipping the jab and countering with a powerful right hand. As I just mentioned before, the Mexican likes to lure his opponent to jab by leaning forward with a high guard. This therefore gives a tempting target for his competitors, which quite often results in that right hand counter. Sometimes though he will slip on the inside instead of the lead hand and throw an overhand right which we saw against Triple G, or against a southpaw like Trout, he'd throw that lead straight down the middle. Another counter Canelo likes to use is the pull counter with waist movement and then returning with a right uppercut, which is obviously a very high risk reward tactic, as if not timed correctly you can get caught in the chin. But obviously Canelo trains his reactions and defense so well to be ready to return with these types of punches. Footwork and defense. In terms of his footwork overall, Alvarez has a very strong base and balance when moving around the ring. In his 147 to 160 pound years, I'd actually say he was a lot more fluid with his movement at times, especially on the back foot, or to give a more boxy analogy, floating like a butterfly. When using defensive movement up close though, Alvarez likes to instead use a lot of waist and roll movements before quickly pivoting to get back to a better position to mainly get out of his competitor's reach. 
Sometimes if the opportunity was available he will counter punch after using these movements. You only need to watch other all time defensive greats such as Floyd Mayweather, Whitaker or Lotchi use these types of moves time and time again and Canelo in my opinion is right up there with them too. However what I like about Canelo after using defensive moves, he's always looking to return to his solid base footwork, making sure to not put his feet in a position to lose balance, especially when he's in a range that he can get hit and this is something I feel he's made sure to adapt in his whole new way of fighting. A pressure fighter. In more recent years Alvarez has lived up to a more Mexican style of boxing ever since his second fight versus Golovkin. Canelo has become a first class operator at applying pressure on his opponent by slowly walking them down and controlling the distance, despite being the smaller man at 5 foot 8. Alvarez applies this pressure by walking them down with small steps, a tight high guard and moving his upper body over his front foot as he creeps forward into the attacking range. He keeps his front foot directed at his opposition as he waits for an opening. While this also gives the illusion to the opponent that Canelo is within punching range, Canelo will then usually wait to throw a single shot such as a left hook or right hand after using waist movement. Canelo is also someone who can up the tempo and start to close off the ring quickly when he has to. This can create much panic but it also forces the opponent to rush their work to get out of position to stop Canelo from setting up his powerful shots. Canelo's use of the high guard defence also makes it difficult to stop his pressure as he's very good at blocking and catching shots with his gloves. Probably one of the best examples of Canelo upping this tempo was in the 11th round against Kovalev in the championship rounds. The constant pressure and eventually a fatigued Kovalev saw him make a mistake in his own defence, leading Canelo to win in spectacular fashion. Ring IQ and Traps As you can tell from everything I've discussed so far, Canelo's ring IQ is something truly incredible, but what I like most about Alvarez is that he lives and breathes boxing. He's always been a student of pugilism and something many young or inspiring boxers can take note of. He said the following about Chepo Reynoso when he first started boxing under him. And I think this is something we can all take as students of the sweet science. He said, I gave it all I had. Chepo saw that, so he also gave me all his attention. The same measure of effort I gave corresponded with the same measure of attention he gave. I've always told kids that are starting and want to learn something key was, I'd leave the gym walking to the bus stop. I was thinking of what Chepo taught me. I'd fall asleep thinking about that. It was like homework. I would keep reviewing it thousands of times at home. The best fighters in history are very much like the greatest chess players. They are always thinking of many steps ahead before the strike. They are always studying how to get better, but also how to defeat their opponent. To give you some examples of this, in his fight against Amir Khan, Alvarez plotted a devastating knockout over many rounds. Canelo was up against a much faster fighter, so the Mexican had to find ways to open up gaps. So he targeted his left side of his body with a right straight or hook to the body. Especially as Khan was circling to his left, Khan was conditioned and expected the Mexican to continue with the shot. Khan would drop his guard over time to try and block this punch, which therefore led to a devastating finish by Alvarez as he eventually switched to the head. Another great example of ring generalship was against Caleb Plant and he was coming up against, once again, a bigger super middleweight who likes to move and counter punch while using that shoulder roll stance. Something he had an absolute nightmare against when facing Floyd Mayweather in his younger years. Alvarez had no doubt relived that defeat many times before in terms of what he would do differently, but Alvarez has matured as a fighter. Just like in the Mayweather fight, Plant was countering Canelo with right hands as he was coming into range. The Mexican then adjusted to this very intelligently when after throwing his left hook or jab, 
he would immediately use it to control the body or head of Plan, which would stop Plan from being able to counterpunch himself, and was therefore able to throw other punches like the right hand over that shoulder roll which Plant does so well, or also using it as an opportunity to use the right hand to throw to the body to wear down Plant, which he did so well over the rounds, eventually leading to Plant being knocked out. Extra Tricks and Techniques Attacking the arm. Now one of the moves Canelo has used in more recent years is attacking that left arm of opponents with heavy right-handed punches over many rounds. He obviously most famously used this against Calm Smith who is known to throw that lethal left hook. But what is the point of this? Well, it is simply to dismantle or fatigue the arm so they do not throw it. We have all seen Canelo hit the heavy bag with force and power and you can only imagine receiving those punches to the arm for 12 rounds. In turn, this helps Alvarez then able to throw other creative combinations as discussed earlier. He did try to apply this in the fight versus Bivol, no doubt to try stop him throwing that jab so often, but was unable to damage him like he did to Smith. Another thing Canelo likes to do is line the ropes and encourage his opponent to attack him. Defensively, he knows he has the ability to block and parry shots away or use defensive upper body movement. However, Alvarez will use this as an opportunity to save energy for a moment while also using it as a way to counter-attack or use explosive powerful combinations off the ropes. Many opponents have caught on to this throughout the years, but it still shows another dimension of Canelo to try lure an opponent so he can set up his power punches. Final thoughts, Canelo in my opinion is a boxer I recommend anyone to watch and learn from. Despite what you might think of his actions in the past, there are so many tricks and techniques you can learn from Canelo, including his counter and combination punching, and it's up there with one of the very best I've ever seen. In more recent years his intelligent pressure is something all fighters can learn from and he's a great example of a smaller man facing bigger opponents and how you can actually use it to your advantage. Canelo in my opinion has just evolved and matured into a complete fighter over the years and the fact that he moves up in weight divisions to fight bigger men and, and completely dismantle them just shows you how talented this man is and how lucky we are to have someone like him in this era of boxing. I'd love to hear your thoughts on Canelo Alvarez. Do you think he is one of the best of this era? And will he become the greatest Mexican fighter of all time? I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you want more content like this, why not check out more boxing style breakdowns or watch my Canelo training breakdown video. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.